defense of liberty, and a full accounting of those still missing. Let us rededicate ourselves for this vital endeavor. Now please join me in uh, reciting the preamble to the Constitution of the American Legion and the American Legion Auxiliary. All right. Legionnaires, please remember to pause as the auxiliary recites their additional clause in the preamble and then conclude the recitation of the preamble. For all those who can still see, I'm going to raise my hand at that point in time. Hang on one moment. Okay, forgotten country, we associate ourselves together for the following purposes. To uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. To inculcate a sense to in Americanism. To preserve the memories and incidents of the great To inculcate a sense of individual obligation to the community, state, and nation to combat the autocracy of the classes and the masses, to make right the master of might, to promote peace and goodwill on earth, to safeguard and transmit to posterity the principles of justice, freedom, and democracy. To consecrate and sanctify our comradeship our devotion to mutual helpfulness. Well, that was pretty good. Well, again, I'd like to welcome everyone here today. In this spirit of this morning's general session and conference, being a joint event between our American Legion family and especially our auxiliary, SAL, we have a special treat for you. Please give a warm welcome to the Meek Sisters, auxiliary members of Moorville's Post 103, as they sing the rend their rendition of the national anthem. Are they going to use both of these? stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly
Thank you to both. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What do you do? Shut this off or what? Thank you to both of the talented young ladies for their beautiful performance of the national anthem. Stay tuned, everybody. We'll be hearing from them again during this morning's session. Well, now that I do declare that the general session of the Joint Spring Conference of the American Legion and American Legion Auxiliary and SAL, Department of Indiana to be regularly convened. It's a privilege and a real personal pleasure to welcome the 2018 Joint Spring Conference. Uh, we have a lot to do today. We've got a full agenda for this morning, so I suggest that we do get started. Something you'll notice when referencing your meetings agendas, we are providing American Legion training in a variety of subjects at every conference and convention this year. Please draw, uh, draw your attention to the screens at my right and left. There's training schedule displays on that screen. Please encourage your fellow Legionnaires to take advantage of these opportunities for now and the future, as we all could benefit to learn more about our great organization. We hope you take away the, the most today from our very ambitious meeting schedule. And as always, we have a little fun planned for this evening. So stick around, party with Marty. So please stick around and stop in Liberty Hall tonight at 8 p.m. It'll be our spring fling. Even though we're still waiting for it, it looks like our <laughs> A change? Okay, it looks like we have a change. It will be in the grand ballroom. Thank you, sir. At this point, I consider it a, actually a point of personal pride to present to you your 2017-2018 Department and District Officers, who have been working very hard this year to continue the service and ideals of the American Legion. These folks have been helping veterans across this state to aid our veterans, their families, and their communities. Please stand and remain standing to be recognized as your name is called. And audience, please hold your applause until the end of the introductions. All right, this will take a couple days, but we'll get through it. Well, I just introduced it and he's on his way to the airport. That was our National Executive Committeeman, Jerry Jordan. Our alternate, and he snuck up here, all right. You're good. Our alternate NEC, Ed Trice. We have one Northern Vice Commander here, Jim Hamilton. Please stand. <laughs> he's new at this, you know, he's working on it. Uh, Dennis Pettit is uh, a little under the weather, weather so he's uh, gonna be absent this morning. He might try and Help us out during the rest of the session. Uh, Dennis Southern Pettit Vice Commander uh, Daryl Bowman Weathers. and Ron Ordelheit. Finance Officer Tony Riley. Sergeant at Arms John Sarnecki. My appointed officers Judge Advocate Joe Bumbleberg. Assistant Judge Advocate Terry Smith. Assistant Finance Officer Jim Tracy. Department Chaplain, Pastor Norris Kern. Membership Chairman, Ron Byerly. Department Historian, Steve DeFeo. Appointed Officers, Department Adjutant, Will Henry. The Department Assistant Adjutant, John Crosby. Communications Director, Tim Sproles. Director of Rehab, John Hickey. Assistant Director of Rehab, Steve Hicks. Department Service Officers, Bryce Hewlett, Kathy Kennard. We also have, well, I think that should do it. Can you believe it? I got three.
I didn't even have to tell you to applause. That was very good. All right, everyone, please take your seats. I think you've done that. I'd like to take a minute of, to highlight how our special, our department service officer truly is. Now, their team has one of the most demanding jobs in the American Legion, providing guidance to veterans as they navigate through the complicated VA system that we have. We have the best service officer office in the entire nation, as far as I'm concerned, and if you've ever been in that office over there, they don't have a record here and a record there. They have a whole stack full of stuff. The facts and figures will back up that statement. Did you know that more than 87,000 service-connected disabled veterans in Indiana, our department service office manages more than 62,000 of those people. They generate more than $360 million every year in claims to Indiana through their case management. It is because of our service office that we can truly and probably say our Indiana Legion motto, we change lives. Let us give our department service office a big hand. Now we recently had a vacancy open up in our department service office so contact your Indiana Legion headquarters if you're interested in truly changing lives for our nation's veterans. And now I'd like to introduce to you our district commanders. Please stand up and hold your applause till the end. First district, Joe Simonetto. Please remain standing. Second district, Pete Amity. Third district, Alex Magyar. 4th District, Jim Tempe. 5th District, Jack Garwood. 6th District, Richard Culp. 7th District, Gina Owens. 8th District, Larry French. 9th District, Bill Sherald. 10th District, Lori Bowman. And the 11th District, Reese Morgan. Let's give him a hand. These are our Legion spokesmen and women. And in the field, they're doing such hard work for us, motivating our volunteers to recruit eligible members across the state. Membership is our voice, and all of us are responsible to reach out to veterans in our local communities to spread the word of our American Legion family. And I would, remit, I would be remiss if I didn't introduce these four people to you, our four commission chairmen. They actually do so much work under the table that nobody even knows about it. They're hiding up in their rooms while we're out partying and they're doing all their writing, editing, and getting everything done for the DEC meeting. First up on line, American chairman, Americanism chairman, Mark Gillian. Please stand. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Children and new youth chairman, Jim Dobby. Internal affairs chairman, Alan Conley. You know, I think you guys all got to sit together so I don't have to look all over you. Know? <laughs> Rehab chairman, Bob Oath. All right, how about a nice round of applause? All right, these blue cappers have a great responsibility in managing the committees under their respective commissions. They don't collect a paycheck, they volunteer countless hours, and each are on a path to becoming a future Department Indiana Commander. Thank you for all your dedication for our organization. Now let's take a moment to recognize our current and past national organization leaders as well. Our current national officer, Internal Affairs Commission Chairman Bob Newman. Oh, 
Okay, we got a few past national officers out there too. Past national commander, Jim Couts. Past national vice commander, I guess Mr. Bob Newman again. Wow. Ah, right. Past national treasurer, Weber LaGrange. Past national chaplain and continuing his service today in our department, Norris Kern. Past national sergeant at arms, Al Polito. And past national historian, Jim Holmes. And now let's take a minute to introduce the men whose leadership has guided us throughout the years. Our past department commanders. I'm gonna read this list out, so just hold your applause to the end. And I can't see out there real good, so uh, just please stand up if you're here. Past Dep Department Commander, Bob Ayers, Melvin Napier, Al Werner, Larry Bartlett, Donald Cowan, Jim Couts, Terry Smith, Tom Henderson, Jim John Mahalski, Jim Delaney, Tommy Somerville, Ralph Tolan, Bob Newman, Dick Jewell, Ed Trice, Ken Hilton, Larry Lowry, and Jim May. Thank you gentlemen for being here and for everything you have done and continue to do for this organization. At this time, we'll have a few brief announcements from our department adjutant, Will Henry. Will? Thanks, Commander. I just want to remind everyone, please don't smoke in the courtyard. Please smoke about eight feet away from the doorways. Throw away your cigarette trash. Do you have any uh, issues with the hotel at all? Please let us know. Uh, John Crosby or myself uh, will work our best to uh, take care of any of those issues. Uh, and I want to encourage everyone yet again to take advantage of the training available to you uh, here at the, at the conference today. Uh, there's a lot of great information and, and knowledge you can gain uh, from that training. So I, I just want to encourage you to, uh, to take advantage of that. So uh, with that, I hope everyone has a, has a, a good day today. And uh, thank you all for coming. Thanks, Commander. All right, thank you, Will. Another great, great place to stay in front of our Legion family activities is the department website, specifically at www.indianalegion.org slash events. Now at this time, it's my distinct honor to present my partner in leadership this year, the Indiana American Legion Auxiliary President who has a number of her officers to introduce. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm welcome for Madame President Judy Morris. Good morning. It's nice to see all of you here today. I hope one of these days we're going to have spring. <laughs> I know the commander Thursday, we had the dedication for the Hall of Fame, and he said he was going into being a popsicle. <laughs> you thought out yet? Yeah, there's momsicle. <laughs> <laughs> I also, first of all, I want to thank all the districts for letting me have a chair. We had a little incident this weekend, and I needed chairs for, I got some meetings in my room, and there seemed to be no chairs other than broken ones so the commander said we're not going to have that so we went around to each district last night and got one chair from all of you so thank you very much so us ladies don't have to sit on the floor <laughs> okay i'd like to introduce my your officers auxiliary officers we have nec peggy bishop 
You can hold your applaud till I'm all done too. They go faster. President-elect Betty Slagle, Vice President Jenny Mounty, Secretary Christy Thornberry, our First Lady and Chaplain Roseanne Zikowitz, and I am very excited to announce, we are so proud of our, our First Lady and our Chaplain, she is going to be give the memorial service at the Washington DC Oratorical Contest. DC. Indy. Oh, you're in Indy? Okay, it's Indy. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's about the tenth mistake today. <laughs> Historian Pam Shook and um, Sergeant of Arms Anna Toomey, which is also our, your first district, sixth district president. <laughs> and that's our officers. Your district presidents, we have Denise Delaney Rowland, and she's not here today, so I want you to all to please keep her in your prayers. Her son just passed away, so please keep her in her prayers. Second district, Peggy Egan. Third district, Joy Miller. Fourth district, Joni Timmy, Tempe. Fifth district, Roxy Stoner. Seventh district, Nancy Patterson. Eighth district, Connie Banks. Ninth district, Mary Lou Melton. 10th District, Carolyn Spurlock, and 11th District, Dorinda Reisner. Those are all your district presidents. And would all of the past, or all the chairman and past department presidents please stand. Thank you. Ooh, yeah. as, you as you can all see, we are all working very, very hard supporting all of you veterans and fighting the legislators to pass our important issues. I do want to mention I'm very proud to be a part of the Legion family this year. We've traveled many, many miles from Illinois to Washington, D.C. and all over the state of Indiana and visiting all of you. So I want to thank you personally for all your hospitality on our travels and believe it or not, the commander and SAL Commander Dewey is still speaking to me. They haven't left me yet. Yet. So far. So far. Okay, we still have a lot to do on membership. I know Ron Byerly and Jenny Gump have been working very hard, but they can't do it alone. So we, all of us, it's going to take all of us to reach out there and get those renewals and get these new members. If we can't do it alone, we just need all of us. So now comes the fun part. IVETS, you know, my personal project is IVETS along with the commander. and. In two weeks, I am going to, on the way to the Commander's Homecoming, I'm going to be in a rockathon for IVETS, and I need sponsors. So I would gladly accept any dollars you'd like to donate today or checks, and all the money will go to IVETS. I'm going to be sitting in a rocker, and the more money I can get, the more I'm going to rock. <laughs> so I would collect your donations. I know my first lady would love to have donations. You can even give them to the first dude, but make sure he gives it to me. <laughs> so I would appreciate any donations. Jenny Gump is sitting out the membership table. She'd be more than happy to take your dollars too. So I appreciate any donations we can get. I just want to thank all of you again for your hospitality and thank you for your service. And Commander, I wish you a great rest of the conference. Thank you Yeah, it's been a real pleasure traveling around the state, as well as Illinois and Washington, D.C., with Judy Morris, our president. I can say it's been a real trip. <laughs> Now, wow, another donation. Ooh, cool. And I'd like to thank you for bringing a nice contingent of the ladies out today. In addition to a strong auxiliary, we in the Department of Indiana also enjoy the support of a large detachment of the Sons of the American Legion. We are privileged to have an outstanding SAL leader this year. Please join me in welcoming the 2017-2018 Detachment Commander Dewey Long for
for some remarks and to, in, and to introduce his officers. Do we? <laughs> Morning, everyone. Good morning. And what a crowd we have out here today. It's always an honor <laughs> to see all the blue caps. My heroes is what I call them. It's always an honor being in your presence. Uh, do a little different with my officers. Most of you know them. Uh, all my officers, please rise. <laughs> Up we go. Down we go. All the PDCs, please rise. I love it when playing comes together. Uh, it's a great honor for me today uh, to be up here in front of you guys again. I want to introduce a very special guy that's sort of been behind me all the way. Uh, he's from my home district there in the 7th. If any C. Piper would please come forward and make introductions. Good morning, fellow Legion family members. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Commander. Thank you, Commander. All the uh, honored officers up here, special guests, uh, members, one and all. Uh, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome back to the state of Indiana a special guest, someone who's been here before. Uh, he hails from the great state of Nebraska, and yes, he brought this weather with him. You can blame him. <laughs> he did. He flew in the other day, and it followed him right in. Uh, he is a 44 continuous year member of the Sons of the American Legion. His eligibility is through his father, a Korean War veteran. Uh, he, uh, Danny and his wife Donna have two children, have two grandchildren, all Legion family members. Uh, he has spent 32 years now volunteering at the Nebraska Veterans Home. And imagine this, for 32 straight years he's never missed a bingo game until February when his travel schedule finally caught up with him, 32 years in the making. So would you please give some warm Hoosier hospitality to our special guest, the National Commander of the Sons of the American Legion, Danny Smith. Good morning, Indiana. Good morning. That wasn't too bad. We might try that again in a little bit. It is great to be here uh, in Indiana again, and I apologize about the weather, but spring is coming. <laughs> spring is coming. Department officers, detachment officers, district officers, members of the American Legion, American Legion Auxiliary, Sons of the American Legion, American Legion Riders, national representatives, and distinguished individuals with us this morning. Brothers and sisters in this, our great American Legion family. I do want to thank any seaman, uh, Mike, for those kind words of introduction. And I want to thank you for that warm welcome. But to be honest, I should really stand here and applaud you for what you do for this organization and what you've done for this country. It is indeed a great honor to be here to represent our nearly 370,000 members of the Sons of the American Legion as a national commander this year. And as you've just heard, I am a proud son of a uh, Korean War era Air Force veteran. But what I'm sure you don't know is that I'm also a proud son-in-law of a World War II Merchant Marine and Korean War Army veteran. Now I know that does not make me eligible for the Sons of the American Legion, but it is indeed something to be proud of. Good morning, Indiana. Good morning, sir. That's what I like, enthusiasm. You know, if we get enthused about our organization, what we do and what we're all about, our membership surely will grow. I truly believe that enthusiasm builds enthusiasm, and as long as we stay energetic and enthused, those members will come, and they'll be knocking on our door to ask us to belong. 
Now, I selected a theme this year for our, our, our uh, general theme for our organization that I felt represented who we are, what we do, and our mission as an organization. And that theme is following their footsteps, making history. And by now, you should all know that we've already made history back in Reno when the American Legion elected the first ever female veteran as national commander of their organization. Uh, truly a historic mark. Absolutely. We will make history again here in a few short months in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when the American Legion meets for their 100th national convention. Now there's a little time left to make some more history before we get to Minneapolis. Just uh, depends how hard you're willing to work to make those historic marks. Now there's no doubt in my mind that you are enthused and energetic and willing to make some more historic marks before we meet Minneapolis. So please continue with your efforts, work hard, and let's make some more history before we get together here in about five months. Now keeping in line with National uh, Commander's theme of Family First, we've selected a couple American Legion family programs to support. Uh, the Endowment Fund, which supports temporary financial assistance and your veteran service officers training, and also the uh, National Emergency Fund. So I encourage you to continue to support those organizations, uh, along with our continued support and your help with the Child Welfare Foundation, uh, one of our premier programs that we support wholeheartedly. I want to give you a quick review of what uh, our organization did last year in support of the American Legion and our ideals and principles. Total dollars invested that was reported to National and the reports that I saw, nearly $7.4 million invested in your programs. And you notice I said invested because uh, I truly believe it is an investment in our youth, in our country, in our communities. So I use that word investment more than I use dollars donated. And nearly two million hours of service. Now the American Legion Auxiliary is kind enough to give us a dollar value of those uh, volunteer hours. And if, if you uh, do the math, you'll come up with 42 $6 million in value of service. Combine that with our actual dollars invested, nearly $50 million invested in value of service and actual dollars in the American Legion programs. <laughs> now, let's talk a little bit about what's going on here in Indiana. Total dollars invested that was reported last year, nearly $500,000. Hours of service, 121,000 plus hours. Value of those hours, $2.79 million. Total values uh, of those combined dollars invested and hours of service value, $3.26 million. Quite impressive, to say the least. Now nationally, those numbers represent about 30% of our squadrons, and I'm not sure what the, what the average here in Indiana is, but I'm gonna guess it's probably around that 30, 40% of your squadron report. So just imagine what those numbers actually are if we could get everyone to report. I think that would just, you know, really boggle our minds. It's just really just outstanding, amazing. Thank you for your hard work. Now I'm going to wrap this up, and in closing, I want to ask you all just to take a quick look around the room. It's okay. Nobody's going to get you be for being a stalker. You're not going to be charged with being a predator. <laughs> it's pretty easy to see that we're all unique. Not only do we have our own unique appearance, but we come from various backgrounds, cultures, religious beliefs, parts of the country, and even the world. Yet we all have several common bonds. We all have ties to the armed forces of the United States of America, either through a family member or you yourself have served. We love our nation. We definitely respect the flag of our country, and we all have a passion to serve. Surely your reason for serving is as varied as the programs of the American Legion. Nevertheless, the passion is there, and we serve because we feel it is our duty. We are a service organization 
and how or who we serve doesn't really matter. What matters is that we as brothers and sisters in this great American Legion family work together to promote, support, and serve those ideals and principles on which the American Legion was founded. So to those of you that serve this country and never received the dignity and the respect that you surely deserve, I want to say thank you. God bless you and welcome home. My family appreciates you and your service to our country. To all of you, thank you for your service to the ideals and principles of the American Legion. Thank you for your hospitalities and your courtesies extended this weekend. Uh, it is a bit overwhelming and truly appreciated. God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. And God bless the American Legion family. Thank you so much. Centennial coins. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You can wrap it up for a couple hours. Right? A couple hours? Well, I got time. <laughs> Thank you, NEC Piper, Commander Denny. Uh, as Madam President spoke about her little project, IVETS, I want to speak a little bit, take a little bit more time here and speak about my project. It's something new this year. It's called CODA, Children's Organ Transplant Association, headquarters right here in Indiana, the city of Bloomington. And to do a little bit better explaining to what CODA is and what CODA does, we have with us today Mr. Charlie Miller, Director of Development with CODA. Please come on up and say a few words. Thank you. I bring greetings from our president, Rick Lofgren, who couldn't be here today, who some of you may know. He uh, usually is the face of CODA, but he asked me to be here today. I'd like to thank Dewey for giving us the opportunity to uh, present to you today. Over the years, the American Legion family has donated over $1 million to CODA. That's a big number, and we thank you for that. And for those dollars that are raised here in Indiana, 100% of those donations stay in the state of Indiana, and 100% of those donations go directly to help kids needing transplants. CODA doesn't take out one dime for any operating expenses or anything else. Right now, there are over 2,000 kids across the country waiting for life-saving organ transplants. But no one really wants to hear me go on and on. I'd like to introduce our special guest, Lauren Siders, and her mom, Suzanne. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you so much for having us here. We are truly, truly humbled to be in the room with all of you. So when the first thing I saw when I walked in was your motto of change. change. We change lives. <laughs> Sorry, we change lives. So this is a great opportunity for you all to really see how that has changed one family's lives. Lauren is a twin and the twins were born at 39 weeks, so they weren't pre premature. We thought everything was great, no worries. When they were both born, they were jaundiced, which isn't that unusual. Owen, her twin, began to clear, and Lauren never did. When she was two months old, she was diagnosed with what's called biliary atresia, which basically she didn't have bile ducts to drain her liver, the toxins and the bile from her liver to the intestines. When she was 10 months old, she was placed on the transplant list and received a liver transplant when she was 14 months old. 
Because of complications, the physicians could not suture up her abdomen. So two weeks after her first transplant, when they went in to close her up, tie everything together, they realized that it wasn't a good match and that the liver wasn't receiving adequate blood flow. So she was once again put on the liver transplant list. And by the grace of God, two days later, she received another liver. And this time, she received a partial liver from an 11-year-old. And we knew it was large, and she was really tiny, but at that point, we had no choice. And the hope was that she would grow into her, her liver. So she did okay for about a year, and then we noticed that her stomach was getting bigger and we couldn't figure out what was going on. She was having trouble with her lungs filling with fluid. She was having trouble eating. And nobody could really pinpoint what was happening. So at one point, we went back to our wonderful surgeon, transplant surgeon, and he looked at us and said, I don't know what else to do but retransplant. And this time, we can't just do the liver because they knew after she had, by this point, had about 12 surgeries. And so we knew that there was no way they could just take out the liver with all the scar tissue. So they listed her for a multi-organ transplant. About three weeks later, Lauren was rushed to Riley Children's Hospital in heart failure, respiratory failure, liver and kidney failure. And three weeks after that, she was blessed again with organs for a transplant. So after a 16-hour surgery, Lauren received a liver, pancreas, stomach, small bowel, two intestines, and part of her superior vena cava. What they found when they went in to close her is that the liver, as large as it was, was trying to fit inside her little body and was laying on her superior vena cava, cutting off blood flow. So that's the miracle that she truly needed. And we walked in the room after that 16-hour surgery, and she was sitting up eating an orange popsicle with a huge smile on her face, and I knew that we were going to be OK. <laughs> About a year later, she developed a lymphoma that's, that's unfortunately common with transplant recipients, or can be common. So she had some um, chemo medications for about four months. And ever since then, it's been tonsils, and it's been ear tubes, and it's been becoming a teenager. She'll be 12 in a couple, in a couple weeks. In a couple weeks, yeah. <laughs> we truly relied on CODA. And my sister is the one, actually, who found CODA. One of the great things is I had nothing to do with it. And I say that because the CODA team worked with my family and my friends to put together fundraising activities for Lauren and my family. I was mad sometimes, I have to say, because I wasn't invited to some of these fun parties and planning parties where they were working on getting all these things set up because they wanted me to focus on my family and what we needed to do. I'll give you a quick example. They helped. CODA helped organize a yard sale. It was three families long in our neighborhood. It was like a Walmart. <laughs> and one day at that garage sale with some different funding, coming in at different days, raised $10,000. And without CODA, we, even though I have great families and friends and they're very creative, we would not have been able to organize and put some of these fundraising things together to help us with the immense amount of medical bills that we've had. Each one of Lauren's transplants it was over a million dollars. And we do have great insurance, but, but without CODA, we would really have been in a tight spot with co-pays, her medications, and, their, and things like that. So CODA has been an absolute blessing to our family and so many other families who, again, want to be able to focus on their child and their family and surviving. And with the ability of CODA to help with some of these medical funds, we were able to do that. And with your 
assistance and your work towards helping with the Children's Organ Transplant Association, you are helping to change lives. And we cannot thank you enough for being a part of this wonderful organization. So thank you. Thank you for helping our country. <laughs> I don't know about everyone in this room, but to me, God is good. Amen. All right, amen. I just ask that you all continue to support us as we help kids right here in Indiana. So if you can go back to your post and tell these stories, and if there's any way we can work with you to help kids just in the state of Indiana, we would really appreciate your help. Thank you so much for everything. What I've said from the beginning, once you're a member of the Code of Family, as you can tell by there, you're there for life. So, you see the squadron's doing functions. You want to do a function of your own, let us know. Uh, I've got representatives, you know, not only Charlie and stuff, I've got guys from my squad, or my detachment, just willing to come and help you any way possible. Randy Marty, thank you for letting me take up a little bit more than time than normal. I'm going to anyway. turn it over to you. Me and my detachment now need to go out and start thanking our vets again, so if you don't mind, we will exit when we leave. We have a lot of work to do to thank you very much. 90% of you guys are going to leave? <laughs> Don't you want to listen to our great... <laughs> All right, we'll see you later. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Well, I think they left already, but I just want to thank you for sharing that powerful story with us today. Our Legion family are here for you and CODA to support the thousands of children that require these life-changing procedures. Let's give them a hand again. And I'd like to thank the National SAL Commander, Smith, for your support of our Indiana Legion family and for your support of our veterans. I knew I liked this guy because he's a volunteer for bingo. <laughs> and you know, I'll tell you what, we need to uh, get maybe the, uh, the Governor Holcomb to be a volunteer for bingo and see how these people work bingo. Maybe he can do something to help our Indiana American Legion survive and help our bingo volunteers. So with that, Commander Dewey, you and your team have contributed greatly this year to the work the Legion has been doing across the state. I can't thank you enough. Our next guest is here to speak to, the, to us about the Legionnaires Insurance Trust. Through this wonderful program, every Legion family member is entitled to free accidental death and dismemberment life insurance. And that's just being a member of the American Legion. Let me say that again, and you know, it's free. All you need to do is sign up and the sign up area, you can go to www.thelit.com. Not only do they offer this service, but they give financial aid to the Indiana Legion every year. More than $1.3 million to date. We have a familiar face here this morning to tell us about the LIT program. Please give a warm welcome to our past department adjutant, Mike Ayers.
Thank you, Commander, Madam President, ladies of the auxiliary, sons of the American Legion, legionnaires one and all, thank you for including the LIT, the Legion Church Trust, in your annual spring conference. I thought I was going to be up here this morning briefly delivering some bad news, but I got a very good phone call, which I'll share with you in just a moment. Since January, we've had a new overseer carrier called Securian. Anytime you change carriers, we drop Transamerica. You have to go through the State Insurance Commission, and they go through everything, all your new, all your new and old programs. So we haven't been able to sign anybody up for ADD, Cancer, Medsa. Those of you with existing policies, you're good to go as long as you pay the premium. So my boss, Carl Adamak in Minneapolis, called me late last evening and assured me that as of May 1, we are back up and running in Indiana, so you can sign up online or you can call the 800 number. And I assure you when you call the 800 number in Scottsdale, you will speak to an English-speaking American. I can assure you that. <laughs> Since 1991, NDA has received over $3 million from the trust. Next week in Tucson, Arizona, the trust directors will meet again for three reasons, two reasons. One, to discuss the insurance program. The other is to pick up the checks. Indiana has been getting around $100,000 each year. I don't know what the number is this year. They don't even tell us. But Hugh Dagley will join me and the other trust directors in Arizona, and I can assure you that Hugh will be there. I can assure you that Hugh will receive the check. I can assure you that a picture will be taken of Hugh receiving the check, but what he does with it after that, I have no idea. <laughs> Judy, you'll be interested too because the auxiliary gets a little bit of that money, so you'll be searching for Hugh Dagley once oh, he returns. Sure, I'll find you. <laughs> Finally, Commander, a shout out to John Crosby on your staff. A couple weeks ago, John was in our home office in Santa Barbara with some other marketing people, with our marketing team, to discuss ways to better promote the programs. I was assured that John had some great ideas. They talked about the value of Indiana's website. And so, John, thank you for your service to the LIT. We appreciate it. Commander, I promised I'd be brief. I promised I'd be sincere. And I promised I'd be seated, which I'm about to do. Best wishes for a successful conference, and thank you all once again for including the LIT in your spring meeting. Take care. Thanks, thank you, Mike, for everything you do in the LIT for the American Legion. At this time, I'd like to ask Northern Vice Commander Jim Hamilton to take the lectern for the purpose of a presentation. Thank you, Commander. Thank you to step back. Now, if you would uh, Please? feel free to step down with uh, our Southern Vice Commanders there, Daryl and uh, Ron, for the purposes of a presentation. Oh. Is this going to be brutal? Or? Could be. Have you been good? No. As our lead Indiana Legion family remembers, last year our nation suffered from historic hurricanes that swept through Puerto Rico, Florida, Texas, and many of our southern states. Seeing that our fellow Americans were in need, our Legion family was extraordinarily proactive in our response. Please direct your attention to the screens at my left and right for a short video recalling our response that produced more than $25,000 total in aid, plus emergency supplies in the form of food, clothing, and hygiene products delivered directly to the areas that needed it the most.
once they got here, we were splitting everything up and basically putting it on these tables that you see behind us and sorting it. And now we're going to get to ready to go to three different places right now in the state of Florida. Veterans are trying to help each other, and that's exactly what the American League is all about, helping one another, regardless of race, creed, regardless of color, regardless of, uh, you know, um, uh, their status. Um, we're here to help, help one another and help our communities, um, and we will. But we can't do it alone. The state is hit hard, so we need as much support as we can from all the others, and it's starting to come in. Indiana started us off with a truck today. We can't thank them. Department of Indiana, the Mayor Police and Family. Uh, enough. You guys, you know, we salute you all. We thank the Teamsters Local 135 for coming down here with that truck. The driver was awesome. It's been a tremendous uh, outpouring of love and affection to get a job done. Again, that's helping best. And that's exactly what we do. Commander Ziglowitz, the plaque being presented to you is from the American Legion Department of Florida and their commander, Steve Shuga, to express their appreciation and citation. This citation reads, in recognition and sincere appreciation of your generous donation of hurricane relief supplies, your donations helped ease the suffering and loss of those who have been directly affected from Hurricane Irma. Thank you, Commander. That concludes our presentation. Well, as you know, that happened on Legion Day. And it was uh, a very nice turnout, more than I expected. But I tell you what, if we didn't have such a good staff at this time, probably would have never happened. I know I asked uh, Tim Sproles to take my place going down to FLA, and he uh, did a wonderful job. Uh, he, what do I want to say? He put the pedal to the metal. Didn't get any traffic tickets, but boy, they got there in really good time. <laughs> I happen to have a VA appointment, and you cannot miss those VA appointments because then you got to wait six months to go again. So Timmy volunteered and did a wonderful job. How about a hand? <laughs> and I want to thank everybody here. I accept this plaque on behalf of you. The work you do really truly has an impact on our communities across the nation, and this is just proof of it. It's because of your hard work and selfless service that I can proudly say we change lives. I will proudly display this plaque at our department headquarters. I think that's where it should stay. And I tell you, that was a really interesting day, that Legion Day. <laughs> Hopefully you have another <laughs> interesting Legion Day coming up. <laughs> I'd like to change gears for a minute here. As we all know, our centennial is fast approaching, and we will have a couple of presentations and announcements 
highlighting this today. Part of celebrating our centennial is understanding our past. Of course, our national organization offers for this purpose, and it's called the American Legion Basic Training Online. This extensive training program provides us a better understanding of the mission, structure, and history of our organization. And here to expand on this program is our alternate NEC, Ed Trice. Ed, would you please come forward? Thank you, Commander. I wanted to share a story with you that happened uh, this year. About nine months ago, we received a request from one of our prison posts, it was post 608 in Pendleton, Indiana, and they wanted to take the American Legion Extension Institute course. The only problem is it's an online course and they're not allowed to have computers in prison. So uh, Rob Burkhart and myself worked with the uh, state and national, we came up with a, a, a offline training plan. So in January of this year, Rob and I went up there and on three different Wednesday nights in two hour courses, we manually put this uh, course on for the, uh, the post up there. So in January of this year, 27 members signed up to take the course. The post has a total membership of 21 Legionnaires and 11 SAL. 18 out of the 21 Legionnaires and nine out of the 11 SAL took the test. After the test, we had a graduation and all 27 of them passed the test. How many in here have been to a prison post? Raise your hands, please. Okay, how many have not been to a prison post? Do you have any idea what a prison post looks like? Probably not. Okay, when we first started this prison post in uh, 608, uh, the first time we went down there, they, they showed us the uh, the uh, post had been formed, showed us the uh, room that the prison had given them to have their, their uh, post meeting room in. When we went down to see it, there was four inches of mud and water in the basement over the whole thing. And there was all kind of asbestos pipes around. That's the first experience I had going in there. We came back a couple of months later and a past department commander Baxter installed their commander. At that time, they had had that whole place cleaned up and the pipes were all undone, it was painted up, and they started painting some murals on the wall. And uh, when Commander Baxter installed their post commander, it was a black gentleman named Baxter. <laughs> so after he got after he installed, uh, post commander Baxter says, oh, this is my brother from another mother. <laughs> so that had always been a joke from then on. Okay, uh, when we put this course on, we took three, three uh, Wednesday nights, to, Rob and I went up there and put this uh, course on. And a nice thing about teaching a course in a prison, nobody's got cell phones. So nobody's sitting there texting or taking pictures or looking up something on Google. So it's a very attentive class. You have a captive audience. Yeah, captive audience, right, Commander. <laughs> Okay, I took some slides so we can show you what a prison post looks like. And this is post 608 in Pendleton, Indiana. This is now their post meeting hall. It's about a 40 by 90 post, and it is beautiful. Look at the, how that floor shines. That's just plain old concrete that these prisoners have worked on. Okay, there's many murals. Next slide. This is one in progress that they paint on the wall of the post. This is one where they're still working on it. It's unbelievable what kind of talent they have in these prison posts. Next slide, Tim. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, next slide. It's actually the Vietnam Wall and it looks real when you're standing there. Okay, next slide. Okay, next slide. Isn't that something? Yes. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, this, uh, Rob Burkhart, you see up there behind the podium, he's one of our fifth district officers and he gets all the credit for putting this on. 
uh, between the two of us, he did 90% of the work. So give uh, Rob a pat on the back. And this is Post Commander uh, Baxter getting his, uh, de excuse me, getting his diploma. Okay, now I saved the best slide for last because I wanted everybody to enjoy this. Tim? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks again, Ed. A great online course, completely free of charge. Furthermore, once completed, your My Legion profile shows you as a graduate. If these incarcerated veterans have found a way to take the course and learn more about our Legion history, then why haven't you? So keep that in your mind. The course is at www.legion.org. At this time, I ask Southern Vice Commander Ron Ordelheide to take the lectern and Department Historian Steve DeFeo join me on the lower stage for the purpose of a presentation. Thank you, Commander. Thank you. Thank you, Commander uh, Zikowitz. As the centennial approaches and marks 100 years of Legion history, it becomes clear how important it is to document our story. If we don't tell a good work our Legion family accomplishes year to year, who will? That's exactly what Department Historian D, uh, Steve DeFrail has done, earning national honors in the process. Since taking his office and membership year 2016-2017, Steve has been busy documenting and compiling the good work we accomplished together. His work at 2016 and 2017 Department Narrative History earned second place at the national level. Congratulations, Steve. Can I give them a flash? Yeah, you can give them down. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a nice plaque here. National Historian Project, presented to the Department of Indiana, second place, historian compiler Stephen J. DeFeo. Did an excellent job. At this time, Steve. The file will like to make an announcement regarding upcoming centennial history. Steve? We are we on the threshold of celebrating the centennial anniversary of our 100th year. It's an opportunity to honor our past and set forward our vision about the future. It's an opportunity to focus at our posts, our Egypt programs, and those we help. We can use that spotlight to increase our membership. The program has plans for special events throughout the centennial celebration. We are even hosting the 101st convention here. It's to that end of the session today to gather historians and those involved in local and post-centennial events to see what their plans are and offer assistance as possible to help accomplish those plans. No plans yet? The session can be used to come up with ideas about what to do. We must get the ball rolling to not, not only celebrate our accomplishments, but increase interest in the American Legion during this historic opportunity. We need to advertise our program because they are beneficial to our veterans, their families, and our communities. We need to work to increase our membership and those we serve. Thank you. I want to thank Ron for coming up here to make that presentation. And I also want to thank Steve for your hard work in telling our Legion family story. I know Steve is already working to compile the membership year 2017-2018. And I hope at this time he'll bring home a first place trophy or plaque. 
As the centennial approaches, so does the 2019 National Convention, and it will be hosted right here in Indianapolis. For those who remember the last time the National Convention was hosted here, a lot of hard work is required from the Department of Indiana. Here to expand on that is our very own past National Commander, Jim Couts. Well, thank you very much, Commander, and as most of you that were here at our Midwinter Conference in January remembered I said that I would have a table out front that we would have a piece of paper that you could sign your name, your address, and cell phone number, and email, because we're going to need a lot of help at this national convention just like we have in the past. You know, we're not new at this. This is our fourth one, our last one being in 2012. But this convention is also a 100th anniversary. They're having two centennial national conventions, Minneapolis this year, Indianapolis next year. So please come out by the table. You'll see me sitting out there with the old Operation Comfort Warrior table. Sign your name. Uh, we can talk about some of the committees, and I'll tell you some of the chairmen, and you can decide which one you want, but the most important one to start with is the badges and packets. That requires almost coming up there for a week. Uh, we start on Tuesday, August the 20th, and start stuffing packets. We need 30 to 40 people. To be there, we have to stuff 3,000 packets. And we just we have an assembly line. You go on down, and everybody will put something different in that packet. We do that on Tuesday and Wednesday. Then on Thursday, August 22nd, we start delivering uh, all these packets to these different departments that are going to be around in seven different hotels all around downtown Indianapolis. Like I said, this is probably one of the Biggest challenges is getting these packets because you'll be required unless you live locally to stay all night so we can get to work the next morning getting, these, getting all this done. Uh, another very important committee, and they're all important, but is the parade committee. The parade I'm planning on having the theme is Welcome Home Vietnam Veterans. I'm hoping that to be the theme. And as soon as the parade's over, we're going to have an Indiana post-parade party. Uh, I'm going to talk to a band about coming in and playing, and I'm sure he will because he's a Vietnam veteran. And most of you know him, Russ Chandler. Planning on getting him there. We'll have to do the same thing we did last in 2012 on the uh, vendors, food vendors, uh, beer vendors. We have to have t uh, fences put up. There's a lot of work at this convention, but you know, like I said, we've done this before. We can do it again. So please come out there and uh, sign up. Uh, some of the chairmen we have, badges and packets, is Chairman Tony Riley and Rodney Strong. So if you see one of them that you want to work on the badges and packets, tell them also. The information booth, which we sent, we set out there in front, and people come and ask for they can go to Indianapolis to eat or whatever. That inf that information booth can be shared by to make jewel. The very important one, memorial service on Sunday, and any, any of you have ever been to that, that is impressive. Uh, our chairman this year is going to be uh, Ed Harris and Reverend Kern. They will be handling that. And so far on the parade, the only person I have is Kenny Cooper. We need a lot more people. I'm going to try to get a hold of Dick Holmes, which used to work for National Headquarters, was very good at running the parade, and see if he might want to join us in helping. And the post-parade party, we have nobody yet, but I'm sure we will get enough people. So again, come out there, sign that uh, ledger we got out there. That way we can get a hold of you. And, uh, you can tell us, I got on there, what committee you'd like to be on. You can put that down. So with that, uh, we need all your help. We're going to make us another great, great convention. Uh, we can make a lot of money at this convention. So we need to uh, do a great job. We want to show everybody what Indiana and Indianapolis is all about, and we always do that. So thank you very much for the invitation to speak a little bit. Thank you, Commander. Thank you.
Thank you, Commander Couts. We look forward to learning more about how Indiana will support the 2019 National Convention. I'll tell you what, back in 2012, when Jimmy threw his party at a rooftop by the pool, that was one heck of a party, so I know he knows what he's doing. Next, I'd like to call up our Department Assistant Adjutant, John Crosby. He's going to talk a little bit about volunteer opportunities for the American Legion family at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This partnership has provided more than $5,000 to support my project, IVETS, in the past year. Please enjoy this short video on the screens to my right and left as John approaches the stage. John? Good morning. morning. How many have been at uh, an Indy 500 race in the past? It's, a, it's definitely a, an excellent show. We have an opportunity again this year. We partnered last year with the Indiana Motor Speedway uh, to volunteer as ushers, as ticket scanners, um, as, as folks working the gates uh, to earn $100 towards IVEST, the Commander's Project, this year. Uh, something a little different we're going to come back and do this year. 50% uh, of that money goes back to your post. So anybody that wants to come out volunteer, go ahead and give your post name. They're going to write a $50 uh, dollar check to your post uh, and a $50 dollar check to the Commander's Project for IVETS. We made a little over $5,000 last year. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good opportunity. You go out to the track. We get $10 in track bucks. Lunch is on us. Um, water. It's, uh, it can be a, somewhat of a long, hot day. Uh, but it's worth it, and it's, uh, you know, IVETS is certainly a worthy project. Uh, is anybody, did anybody here volunteer last year? I want to do something a little unusual right now. Would you guys come up? Anybody who volunteered last year? I got a check right here, and this is from last year. It's the last payment we had, $1,500 for IVETS. If you would, come up, and I'll let you to get this to the department commander for a photo op. You want to go down on the lower stage? Of course. Whatever you say, sir. <laughs> Joe Allen, Sharon Grubb, Sharon Grubb, Lori Bowman. Thank you guys for your volunteers. Thank you.
So after all of our volunteers last year for the Indy 500, for the Red Bull race, for NASCAR, uh, they've asked us to come back again this year for those same events. Um, the Indy State Fairgrounds has, have, have also asked us to come back, so there's going to be more opportunities that come up. Uh, the 500 Festival work in the parades. The word's getting around that our volunteers volunteering for this program. You guys can sign up online, indianalegion.org slash IMS. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, John. I encourage you to get out there and enjoy a day at the track, all to help our fellow veterans. Way back when, you know, I didn't have any money, so we had a quarter mile track that we used to run. And I, we had an friend that had an old Bel Air and it looked so rickety but it won so many races because it had a 454 engine in there that nobody knew about. <laughs> That's what happens when you don't have money when you're younger. <laughs> so my wife gives me some money now and I can go out. All right, in the spirit of supporting our youth, we have several bright Hoosier students with us today, and I am pleased to call our Children and Youth Chairman, Commission Chairman, James Dobby, for a presentation. Oh, he has plenty to do this morning, so uh, good luck, sir. Thank you, Commander. Hey, listen, I just... Uh, This guy here, mm -hmm. phonetically, if you can do it, it's up to you. No Good morning, Legion family. Thank you, Commander Sigowitz. As this year's Children and Youth Commission Chairman, I am pleased with the growth and participation in our programs and the quality of our winners. I also want to congratulate all the members of our team who worked so hard this year to promote these winners from among our state schools. It is indeed a pleasure to be here today to honor these students for their achievements. At this time, I would call on the Americanism and Government Committee Chairman, Reese Morgan, to join the commander on the lower stage to present the Americanism and Government Test Awards to participants for this year's ANG test program. Each of our winners will receive a scholarship and a plaque of appreciation from the department. These young men and women have distinguished themselves by finishing at the top of their grade on this year's test. As I call our names, I would like our young guests to join Commander Zigowitz and Chairman Morgan on a lower stage to receive their scholarships and plaques and have their photo taken. Being recognized this morning, in our junior testing class, which are the seventh and eighth graders who will receive a $500 scholarship are seventh grader Savannah or sponsored by Newburg Post 44 in the eighth district. <laughs> seventh grader Patrick Colors sponsored by Munster Post 16 in the 1st District. Eighth grader Emma Jacobs, sponsored by Griffith Post 66 in the 1st District. Eighth grader, Yeager Ludikoff, sponsored by West Lafayette, Post 38, in the 2nd District. Being recognized this morning in our senior testing class, which are grades 10 through 12, who will receive a $1,000 scholarship are 10th grader Leanna Bowles, 
sponsored by Newburgh Post 66 in the first district. That's not right. I thought Newburgh was in the eighth district. Hmm. I'm only reading what's written down here, but I knew it was wrong. <laughs> Tenth grader Patrick Karen, sponsored by Valparaiso Post 94 in the second district. Eleventh <laughs> grader Rebecca Fails, sponsored by Avon Post 145 in the sixth district. Eleventh <laughs> grader Thomas Cranky Jr. Sponsored by Avon Post 145 in the 6th District. 12th grader Genevieve McClure. Sponsored by Laporte Post 83 in the 3rd District. And 12th grader Matt Burns. Sponsored by Laporte Post 83 in the 3rd District. Mr. Burns could not be here this morning. Would our third district commander or a representative thereof join the commander on the lower stage for a photo op? That's 10 of our finest students here in Indiana. So please give this year's scholarship recipients a warm round of applause. Thank you, Chairman Morgan, for your help. I would now like to call on Flag Education and Etiquette Committee Chairman Thomas Fedrick to join the commander on the lower stage. The next two students are the fourth grade flag essay contest winners. Every year from across the state, students get a better understanding of our nation's flag thanks to our wonderful volunteers who visit schools and work with the teachers and administrators to promote this program. As I call your names, please join the commander on the lower stage to receive your award and recite your winning flag essays. Each of these students will receive a $1,000 scholarship award and will read their essay right here on stage. The first student I would like to introduce is Madeline Beyer, sponsored by Newburgh Post 44 out of the 8th District. Outstanding job, Madeline. Congratulations. The next student I will introduce is Will Steckler, sponsored by Ferdinand Post 124 out of the 8th District. I think about how all of these veterans fought, helped the city, 
shape or guard our face. Another thing I think about is how hard people have worked to shape our country into such a beautiful, free, free place. I also think about my family members who have served and came back successful and happy. If you think about it, a lot of people don't realize how many freedoms we have and how helpful being free is. I look at our flag and think how much our country comes together when danger and bad things happen. About veterans who gave their lives for other people, like you and me. Every color on the flag gives me hope, faith, and definitely happiness. I definitely think about people who during battles never gave up hope and said for you. People who respect the flag should be very happy. Speaking about our flag, I always have it flying during the day and still have it up at night with a light on it. Finally, I want to say when our flag is on its pole waving in the wind, I just stop and smile. Congratulations, Will and Madeline, on your great essays. And thank you, Chairman Frederick, for all your and the committee's hard work. <laughs> Our oratorical competition took place at National Headquarters early last month. We will, too, take a moment to recognize them for their achievement. I would now like to call on our Oratorical Committee Chairman Rick Husden to join the commander on the lower stage. The runners-up are Suyash Apal of Jefferson High School, sponsored by Lawrence Capehart, post 35 in Jeffersonville, Indiana, earning an $1,800 in scholarship. Will our 8th District Commander or representative thereof join the Commander on the lower stage for photo op? Representative from the 8th is coming up. Adam Veldman of Bishop Lures High School, sponsored by Waynedale Post 241 in Fort Wayne, Indiana, earning $1,800 in scholarships. Will our fourth district commander or a representative thereof join the commander on the lower stage for a photo op? Kinley Boyd of McCutcheon High School, sponsored by First United Methodist Church Post 38 in West Lafayette, Indiana, earning $1,800 in scholarships. Will our second district commander or a representative join the commander on the lower stage for a photo op? And finally, our department first place winner was Isaac Bach of Eagle Creek Academy, sponsored by Broad Ripple Post 3 in Indianapolis, with $4,200 in scholarships. I understand Mr. Bach is with us this morning. Please join our commander on the lower stage. <laughs> with 11th District representative come up then. Let's give a big hand to all those who participated and volunteered to make our 2018 oratorical contest a huge success. Our junior shooting sports competition was held at Seymour Post 89 in March. I'd like to call our junior shooting sports chairwoman, Ida Mae Jewell, to the lower platform with Commander Zigowitz. Our junior shooting sports competition champion and $1,000 scholarship winner was James Kleber, sponsored by Waynedale Post 241 in the 4th District. I understand that Mr. Kleber could not attend this morning. Here to accept the word on his behalf is his coach, Steve Epperson. 
of the Screaming Eagles. Mr. Epperson has joined the commander on the lower stage. Coach Epperson, if you'd like to say a few words at this time, you're welcome to do so. Oh, let's take a picture first. to have had the privilege to help promote these young men and women we have honored this morning. They are truly dedicated to gaining knowledge of the principles of our nation and government and making our communities a better place to live. Thank you all for your participation and efforts on behalf of the whole Children and Youth Commission. Congratulations to everyone on your awards. We wish you all a great success in the future. Thank you, Commander. Thank you, Jim. Please let all the members of the Children and Youth Commission who couldn't be here today know how much we appreciate their work. And to each of the recipients today, congratulations. Well done. Let's give them one more round of applause. The Department of Indiana has recently added another great opportunity for our Indiana youth. We've partnered with the Indiana State Troopers Youth Services to create the American Legion Indiana Youth Cadet Law Enforcement Agency, or actually Academy. I believe there's no one better to head up this initiative than Speedway Post 500 member Mark Gillian. He's a retired homicide detective, a retired military police officer, Boy, I never had fun with those guys in the service. <laughs> and now he teaches criminal justice to young high school students, giving them the opportunity to earn college credits at Ben Davis High School in conjunction with Vincennes University. Mark, please take the lectern and tell us more about this new program. Oh. <laughs> Good, morning. Good morning. I'm pleased to come up today to talk to you a little bit about the Indiana American Legion Cadet Law Enforcement Academy. Uh, it's going to start on July the 15th this year. We were able, like the commander said, to partner with the Indiana State Police. This year we're going to have 50 uh, young kids male and female from the 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So we won't be interfering with any other program. Uh, we're gonna have uh, four hours, at least four hours of Legion education there. The Indiana State Police will conduct uh, many law enforcement academy, uh, criminal law classes, defensive tactics, driving, shooting, those things like then the um, Legion's part will be the flag education, military history, junior shooting sport, Legion program. We limited this year to 50 cadets so we can get our feet in the door, start planning. We've already got 34 students enrolled. The uh, fee for sponsorship is $300 a cadet, and we need your help with that. Uh, I've sent out to all the district chairmen a spreadsheet that entails 58 different criminal justice schools within Indiana, which is a great resource. <coughs> Each of those schools teach a criminal justice program. My course that I teach, I have 40 students, 12 of them wanted to go, so 12 of them's already signed up. There's 16 slots open. Uh, we have registration through June the 1st. So any help uh, that you can give us, we would appreciate it. Um, and we're also looking for donations from anybody that might want to give us some money. 
Uh, we're going to supply clothing for them, exercise clothing, t-shirts, uh, 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 gym shorts, polo shirts, so we can have a, an official graduation, which you're all invited to, and I hope to see you there. If you need more information, we'll have a committee meeting at 1,400 hours today. And for you Marines, that's 2 o'clock. And then, uh, And then we'll have a part of the uh, Legion education. We'll have another uh, informal meeting at three o'clock. So thank you very much, and look forward for your help. I will always have a special place in my heart for the military police, but I won't go into details on that one. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. We, we look forward to seeing success in this new law enforcement program. At this time, I'd like to call on one of the hardest working legionnaires in our department, membership chairman Ron Byerly. Please come to the lectern and uh, let's hear a couple words. Mark's a brave man having to run that gauntlet down there. <laughs> Thank you, Commander. Since Midwinter Conference, we've had a very busy schedule. In February, we attended the annual Lincoln Pilgrimage in Springfield, Illinois. At this time, I'd like to congratulate the 10th District Commander, Lori Bowman, and the 6th District Commander, Richard Culp, and their membership chairman. They were the first and second place winners of this trip. All four received a nice jacket for their hard work. Then we were off on the Snowball Express. Well, what a time that was. <laughs> Some of the things in the auxiliary van, I'm sure, will have to be kept quiet. <laughs> I would personally like to thank all the posts who were so welcoming around the state. We had a great time visiting, and we collected over 900 Legion cards. I'm not sure how many auxiliary and sons, but I know there were a bunch. Now we have nine weeks left until the close of books. The commanders asked each district to come up with a plan of action. We'll find out their plan at 3 o'clock today in our membership meeting. But it's now time for the Blue Cap Legionnaires at the Post to take over. We have sent out mail, made calls, and sent emails. But all the technology in the world can't replace the good old-fashioned knocking on doors. The personal contact with your members are what we need now to bring this home this year. We'll have an update of our membership at 3 o'clock. Again, thank you for all the hospitality this year, good and bad. You will see me some more. <laughs> at this time, I would like to say on our Snowball Express, I know the commander and our auxiliary president truly appreciates John Crosby's work. Yes. That was kept perfectly on time. The first thing I've ever been on that we left, got there on time and left exactly when we were supposed to. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, Commander. It's truly an honor to serve as your membership chairman. So let's see. Uh Ron Byerly says we got nine weeks to go, so that means about a thousand cards a week and we'll be sitting pretty. <laughs> Thanks, Ron, for all your hard work and the team for helping out membership. Now it's time that we all dig in and work to get those membership cards in. As you all know, our centennial is fast approaching and we've got a few things in the works for our membership to celebrate. At this time, I'd like to call on our Centennial Chairman, Rodney Strong, to the lectern for the purpose of an announcement. Rodney? Thank you. 
Good morning. Thank you, Commander Zigowitz. I have the honor to be the chairman of the Department of Indiana Centennial Celebration Committee. We have a few big things in the works to mark this historical event coming in the next 18 months. To date, we have created the Indiana Centennial Coin, available for purchase at $10 each on the department's website at www.indianalegion.org slash coin. Or you can go down to the headquarters here at the hotel. I have four left. <laughs> <laughs> so please buy them. The proceeds produced from these coin sales, which amount to more than $21,000 since they went on sale less than four months ago, will fund future centennial events. I'm proud to announce the first event, Legion Family Day. It's at Victory Field in Indianapolis on Sunday, August 12th, 2018. Come out, enjoy a baseball game, the Indian, Indianapolis Indians versus the Red Sox. It's easy to do. Go to the Legion website, scroll down to the Victory Field, click on to that. You have to punch in, uh, no, you're not a robot. <laughs> then click on, you have to type in Legion for the code. Go down where it says uh, buy, click buy. Then you can see your seats, click on each one of those seats you want, and then buy them. Let's sell the place out for us. It'll be a fun time. The day will be full of Legion Centennial ceremonies and displays. Children under 14 will eat free. Again, visit www.indianalegion.org slash centennial or go to Legion website to learn more which purchasing tickets, as I said, was Legion code for the discount. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you the voice of Indianapolis Indians for more than 40 years, Indiana Baseball Hall of Fame inductee, our friend Howard Kellerman, to the lectern, please. As Howard approaches the stage, please enjoy these videos on the screens to my right and left, promoting Legion Day at uh, Victory Field. Thank you, Rodney, and I'm glad you showed that video as opposed to the one from the game last night. Because <laughs> we didn't get off to a good start, but we play a lot of games. I'll get to the partnership. You people are such special people because you change lives. And I have the pleasure of working with Will and John and Tim and Tina, and they're great, great people. And we're honored to be partnering with the American Legion. One quick story. When I first started with the Indianapolis Indians, we used to shoot off fireworks whenever an Indian's batter would hit a home run. We don't do it anymore, but some teams still do it. If any of you have gone to Cincinnati, the Reds have been doing it forever. So I say to you, how would you feel if you're the visiting pitcher? You feel bad enough you've given up a home run, and now you have to listen to fireworks on top of that. So the Astros are playing the Reds, Mark Portugal's pitching for Houston, and the Reds batter hits a home run. Boom, 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 and the fireworks are going off, and Portugal's getting antsy. Next batter comes up. Another home run. And boom, 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 all kinds of smoke and fireworks. Now Portugal's starting to get real upset. Well, the next batter comes up. 
a third straight home run. There go the fireworks and the dust and the smoke. Now Mark Portugal, the Astros pitcher, is so upset he can't even see straight. He's given up three straight homers. He's had to listen to fireworks. Meanwhile, Bob Cluck, the Houston Astros pitching coach, also is upset because he's seen his pitcher give up three straight homers. Cluck is angry. Portugal is angry. And Cluck walks out to the mound to talk to Portugal. And Portugal says, what are you doing here? And Bob Cluck said, hey, I have to give the guy a chance to reload the fireworks. <laughs> You have to have fun. As the great Hall of Famer Willie Stargell said, the umpires don't say work ball, they say play ball. We are just honored, and Rodney talked about the big day, August the 12th. We'll have a wonderful time out there. I've already started promoting it. I talked about it last night on the broadcast. The Indianapolis Indians opened the season last night. We will not go 140-0. and 0. We found that out. <laughs> we got beaten by Columbus. We're ahead 2-1. to one and an error was committed to prolong the inning and Columbus scored eight runs in the sixth inning. That's baseball. Like Hall of Famer Earl Weaver said, this isn't football, we do this every day around here. <laughs> so I just want all of you to remember one thing. If baseball were easy, they'd call it football. <laughs> We have a wonderful time working with Will and John and Tim and Tina. They are truly great, great people. We're honored for the partnership. We also have you guys, we're honored that you're a TV sponsor. And uh, I'm doing a TV show as well. You're with that and some high school games. It's just a great, great relationship. And I would do anything I can to help any of these guys. So I want to say to you a few things. As Rodney talked about, you know the date, August 12th, we'll be promoting it all year. I also want to say, when you're at the ballpark, please stop by and say hello to me. You're welcome. The suite level is the third floor. You tell the receptionist right next to the elevator that you're a friend of mine. I said you can visit, and I promise you, you'll spend the night in the city-county lockup. <laughs> no. I'm serious. Tell them you're a friend of mine. You're welcome in the broadcast booth. You're not bothering me in the slightest. I'd love to see you. At any time you're there, please feel free to come up and visit me in the broadcast booth. And I promise you, I will show you how not to broadcast a game. <laughs> I wish more people laughed at that because that's a joke. <laughs> but uh, seriously, just get a pass, and the suite level, by the way, is beautiful. It's been redone. It's absolutely looking sensational. It honors our rich history. You know, you're celebrating your centennial, which is great. The Indianapolis Indians go back to 1902. So we, we have a great tradition. You have a great tradition. And I look forward to seeing you and you people visiting us at the ballpark anytime you're welcome. And on that big day, that August 12th, that's going to really be special. And it'll be a four-month campaign on our part to promote it. So I'm honored to be here to say a few words to you. And thank you so much for your partnership, for all the great work you people have done over the years for our country and our state. And we'll see you at Victory Field. Let's play ball. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Commander. This ends our uh, announcement. Really? Yep. Thank you. You're done? Yep. Thank you. Well, thanks, Howard, and thank you, Chairman Strong. Doesn't get more American than baseball, like somebody said. I think it was Yogi Berra. It ain't over till it's over. Espe especially when you combine it with a celebration of 100 years of American Legion service. You know, at this point in time, there's also, I'd like to interject something different, along the same lines as baseball for the northerners over here, and it's anybody in the state of Indiana, we have a team up north called the Whiting Oilmen. 
what they're doing is they're promoting their team and they're giving us a discount. If you stop in and buy your tickets there, just present your card, SAL, Auxiliary Legion, and they'll give you 50% 50 50 off your ticket price. That'll be going into the uh, into, into our rep website so you can get it, check it out and get all the info on that. So with that in mind, don't forget the Indianapolis Indians play all year too, so you can stop in and see them, not only on August 12th. At this point, we will begin to wrap up our proceedings. Adjutant Henry, do you have some final announcements? Yes, thank you, Commander. Uh, I do want to highlight the uh, dedication of the Indiana Military Veterans Hall of Fame, which was done uh, Thursday, April 5th. Uh, very, very uh, great present or uh, great dedication ceremony that they had out there, uh, well attended. Uh, lots of uh, uh, elected officials and leadership in the area came out. Uh, it was just a, a wonderful day to see that opened up and, and, and to see uh, inside the building and those honored inside that building as well. Um, I have a, a, a just a few dates here, but they're important dates in between now and department convention. Um, the first one I want to highlight, the department commander is going to be attending the uh, USS Indianapolis christening ceremony next weekend in Marionette, Wisconsin. And what that is, is uh, it's sort of along the lines of the USS Indiana. It's a renaming uh, of a new ship uh, that will be uh, christened next weekend. So you should see some photos and other things coming up for that. There is a system worth saving town hall event Monday. April 23rd at 7 p.m. at post 241 in Fort Wayne. So those of you in the 3rd District, 4th District, 5th District who go to the VA Medical Center there in the Fort Wayne area, uh, please make it out to that town hall. The national organization is coming into uh, Fort Wayne post 241. Uh, they will listen to the concerns uh, praises, whatever it may be, uh, from the citizens uh, who utilize that, those VA facilities, listening to the folks in the town. Uh, there'll be an hour-long town hall from 7 to 8 at post 241, April 23rd. Uh, the next day, that group uh, coming in from the national organization will actually do a site visit uh, with the department commander and a couple of the area post commanders up, up that way. And they will actually go walk through and they will talk with the VA and they will uh, um, just see what's actually, what's actually happening and get the highlights from, from the VA there. Uh, Hoosier Boys State, uh, June 17th to the 23rd at Petrine University. The deadline to register is May 1st, so please uh, Get, register, get, get your delegates registered for Hoosier Boys State, HoosierBoysState.org. Uh, visit that. Uh, you, can, you can sign up online. Uh, the American Legion Family Camp Out, June 22nd to the 24th. That's going to be a Fortville American Legion Park. Uh, down on the lower stage, if you have any uh, donation presentations to the commander, please uh, make your way to the lower platform.
Hi, Commander. Uh, last year, my wife and I uh, took part in the Internet, Indianapolis 500 Mini Marathon, 13.1 uh, miles. Uh, we walked it on all the paths around the state. But well, we did a little fundraiser within the 3rd District and we collected a little over $2,500 in pledges for IBEX last year. My understanding is that's about what was given out at the Winter Conference. So we need to grow on that again. So my wife and I are going to do this one more time. And I have to present to you tonight, or today, a check from uh, Squadron 154 for $131 for their donation to IMS. Here's a check from the South American Legion of the Kings and Rights Post for $131 for the uh, IMS program. And a check from the Kings and Rights Legion for $131 uh, for IMS. Uh, plus, I have uh, two pledges from Post 210 and Middlebury Night Post and also from Jack and Harold and Cook for $131. So it brings the total donations from the 3rd District of $655, or 26% of our $2,500 goal this year. The challenge, Commander, is for the other 10 districts to each come up with a minimum of $2,500 for IMS to the meeting. Thank you very much.
Sons of the American League is squad for two seventy six one hundred dollars. Ten bucks. Minneapolis forty dollars. This guy here, Sergeant Major Raymond E. Old from Raleigh, Illinois, drives over to Mount Vernon, Indiana, post five once a month. He gives a hundred dollars every month. Wow. They gave another hundred dollars there. George and Gail Thorpe from Boonville, twenty-five dollars. George Lee from New Bern, one hundred dollars cash, and I'm so so far this morning got a hundred dollars worth of sales out there at the table. Another thing I wanted to tell you about post sixty-four. This is the second year we've had the uh, Mississippi Red Lips and River Dogs band. They they pay for all. Or they don't charge us nothing for the band. They play four hours. We had a bucket sitting up there. But they can have the tips, which was four hundred thirty-eight dollars. They don't donated that to Operation Comfort Order. That's not even half the budget. Another check from Sergeant Major Raymond Old for another hundred dollars. Larry Lowry, a hundred dollars from Logansport, and Richard and Andrea Wolke from Logansport. Another hundred dollars. That's a total of thirteen hundred twenty-eight dollars a day. I tell you one thing: those ham and beans at Post Sixty Four was really good that day. Plus all the people donating money. Come on back. Uh, at Joe Allen, Post Two Seventy Six. Always tough to follow the menu rights after a contribution like that. Uh, this is for the uh, Broward Children's Hospital, fifteen hundred dollars. Wide variety. Commander, my name is Mark Lewis. I'm a post 
the eighth fourth district, and we got three hundred dollars for your sign project. Hopefully, whenever that weather breaks, we'll get a new sign up. Yeah. Might not be till next year. I don't know. Commander, on behalf of the 4th District Sons of the American Legion, from our proceeds of our putt-putt outing that we have every year, uh, all the proceeds went to IVETS. I have a check for $5,200. All set? Another fine program. They really know how to do it over there at Fort District. Yeah. <laughs> Sue Hunt from the 8th District, and you have a check for $301 for the IVIS program. Jimmy.
So they're from the Brunchville Correctional Facility. <laughs> they would like to be here to present this check, but they couldn't make it. <laughs> Their check is for two thousand dollars. They do a lot of hard work up there for Operation Double Fire. Thank you very much. Those two letters. Commander, uh, my calculations are closely mathed, right? Uh, Twenty-seven thousand. $266 in donations this morning. Thank you, everyone. Well, that was really nice. Okay, winding down here. At this time, let's hear another lovely performance by our very own Meek Sisters, Mooresville Post 103. Thank you, ladies, for another beautiful performance. Let's hear it again for their great singing ability. Well, it's <clears throat> I'd like to thank each and every one of you for attending this joint spring conference. I'm looking forward to seeing you at all my spring theme party tonight in the Grand Ballroom, correct? The party with Marty begins at 8, so stop in. 
Now, please let's stand as I call on Southern Vice Commander. Ooh, they're good. <laughs> Daryl Bowman and Ron Ortelhide to retrieve and fold the POW MIA flag. Well done, gentlemen. Please remain standing as the Auxiliary Department Chaplain, our First Lady, and my lovely wife, Roseanne Ziglowitz, to deliver our benediction today. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that we have again had the opportunity to come together as the American Legion family. We are grateful for this time of work and fellowship. We pray we have made decisions for the betterment of those we serve. As we prepare to leave and continue our separate meetings, may the strength of God sustain us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. May the love of God go with us, this day and forever. Now, Lord, keep us in your grace and be with us until we meet again. Amen. 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 Commander. Thank you. Welcome. While everybody is standing, and with the color of our nation, being in place, please join me in a hand salute. One, two. Thank you for coming. This meeting is now adjourned for the purpose of attending regularly scheduled meetings. Thanks again for coming out.